Uh, machine learning is an area within the field of uh, artificial intelligence. Um, and uh, specifically, I'm talking about how methods in machine learning can be used for difficult problems in neurology, specifically in multiple sclerosis. So, um, as we all know, machine learning, specifically a sub-area called deep learning, has revolutionized a lot of different fields. Um, my area of research uh, is computer vision, which is an area where we develop computer algorithms in order to get computers to understand what they're seeing. Um, and so in the field of computer vision there's been a huge um, sort of revolution in terms of methods that have been um, successful and so deep learning methods applied to problems in computer vision have led to an explosion of um, success in terms of identifying objects um, and you've seen many applications in you know Facebook, autonomous vehicles and all this uh, the, all this growth has um, been generated due to the success of deep learning where it's outperformed other methods by um, huge margins leading to huge uh, success in terms of startups and, and corporate uh, success. And you know, some of the success is in no small part due to the fact that in computer vision there's a lot of data. Deep learning needs a lot of data and a lot of annotated data and of course advances in hardware. And so there's a lot of room for machine learning to have similar success within the context of, of medicine of course from a diagnosis to prediction um, and uh, precision medicine and so on. Um, however, deep learning has not, uh, a lot of these techniques are not regularly used in the clinic. And so there's a couple of reasons for that. Uh, and the first is that typically the, the scientists that develop these techniques um, are typically in computer science or in electrical engineering where they don't typically have access to large annotated data sets. And also they don't typically have access to clinicians and what their needs are, so they develop methods which may not be robust to different sites and, and, and scanners and, and stage of disease and also um, focusing on metrics which may not be important for the specific clinical tasks that, that is of interest. In my group I have a very long-standing collaboration with a company that does software analysis for uh, for the pharmaceutical industry in order to analyze, um, uh, do analysis for clinical trials for MS. And they have given us a huge amounts of data from different clinical trials, from different scanners, from um, different sites. And each of those time points um, has multimodal MRI and temporal information, but also, much more importantly, um, expert annotated uh, lesions and other, and other annotations within the images. Um, in addition to that, I'm part of the International Progressive MS Alliance group that received funding to federate the first big data set of progressive MS patients um, with MRI. And, um, and we are starting to get uh, some, we're, we're hoping to get up to 40,000 patients over time, all their imaging and, and some clinical information. And my group has already uh, received up to, let's say, 20,000 so far. So with all that data, I'm able to do some, some deep learning and some machine learning. And so my group over the last, I would say, fift over 15 years has been developing techniques in terms of um, detecting and segmenting lesions in patient MRI, um, mostly from large clinical trial data sets. And so um, we're also now recently, with the advent of this uh, IPMSA data set, we're now looking at predicting future activity, lesion activity in patients, um, and also future disease progression from baseline imaging. And this is really important uh, for a number of reasons uh, in order to predict for example, how the patient is doing and then do the appropriate treatment selection in order to better understand the disease. Um, and we're, we're also looking at trying to understand whether we can get biomarkers, uh, imaging biomarkers that would be predictive of future um, progression. And this is going to be important uh, not only to just understand progression a little bit better, but also to understand, um, to, for, for, for example, in the context of early phase uh, clinical trials, to be able to, for example, enrich trials or determine if a treatment is working.